こんにちはみんなさんキッザプルーザにようこそ Hello, everyone, and welcome to Get s a p a l o o z a Today, <clears throat> my son Carl is going to be playing the brand new Witch Cult,、uh, which we just built for this video. So I apologize once again for having an unpainted army on the field, but we will be working on resurrect or fixing that right away. Say hi, Carl. Hello. And I am going to be playing some Bakamono along with. <clears throat> new uh,、um, Let's Train and some of the new, one of the new cards from the, uh,、um, uh, the you know, the new set,、um, the cycle set. There we go. So, anyway,、uh, we are playing, the scenario we're playing is Sui Jaku, which is basically a、uh, uh, attrition mission. And if you're unfamiliar with that, You get scenario points for doing wounds, one to one, and you get a bonus scenario point every time you kill a model. So it, it kind of evens up things if you're playing a horde army, like I have,、uh, where the、um, models are easy to kill, but they keep coming back.、Um, so if Carl kills a Bakamono, he will not only get however many points for the wounds that he caused, but he'll get a bonus point for killing the model. And if I have more models on the table that go down easily, he will be earning extra points. For killing them. So <clears throat> you see, we have our, all our new TT Combat buildings. We've got the theater and we've got、uh, the Minka, a couple of different Minkas out here Minka A and C, I think. And、uh, we're in a little town. So the streets are narrow and there's fencing kind of in very key areas. So I will be starting in this corner here and Carl will be starting in that corner over there. Um, somebody mentioned during the last video with the winter fight that、uh, they like the board but they miss the mushroom. So I specifically found the mushroom bag and got them out and kind of salted them all over the table. So there are little mushrooms tucked away everywhere. So、uh, that's it. <clears throat> This is Sui Jaku. It is an attrition mission. We will be trying to kill each other. That's、uh, pretty straightforward. I will be back. We'll take a look at the Savage Wave and then we'll take a look at the new Cult Witch List. Here we are with the Savage Wave. This is a, a motley crew of、uh, models and terrain.、Um, so I'm going to go through it.、Uh, this is 100 rice, obviously. We start out in the back with the cave bat and rider. Then we have a rincho, one out of two possible on the card. We have track, trepang, we have hiratsuna, we have a bakamono, we have two bakamono beaters and a bakamono spearman hiding somewhere. There he is, right there.、Uh, and then we have a whole bunch of cards. <clears throat> to bring this up to 100 rice. So I'll take you through them. This back here is my cavern hole. Now, this was a really fun model to make. It's a little outpost made out of a dead tree with a bakamono claim made out of it.、Um, unfortunately, it's a terrible cavern hole because the, 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 the cavern hole is supposed to be difficult, clear, zero, <clears throat> and destructible. So, it's, it basically it's not supposed to block visibility. Of course, this whole thing blocks visibility. So, we will be playing this as if it was not actually there, if it was just a little bump on the ground. But I'm going to put it on the table as is, and probably I'll try to put it somewhere a little out of the way so we don't have to worry about it.、Um, there's my totem pole. So, I have a totem pole. Of course, I'm running the Thousand Eyes theme, and I have a Bakamono horde, so I'll be able to summon in members of the horde. I did get rice ball barricades knowing that the cult is slow. I'm going to be doing my best to slow them down even more. I have、uh, an event called Throw a Rock. On a successful ranged attack, the target gains a stunned marker. It's just a one shot, little one shot, one point deal, but I thought it was pretty funny. On the cards, 
Track is carrying Hotai's coin. And then Rin the Rincho card has got Endless Numbers Enhancement. So this costs three points per model that you recruit into the Warband from the card. So I only have one Rincho. Um, so this cost me three points. It, it could, cost, could have cost me six had there been two Rincho. <clears throat> and um, if I'm reading that correctly, let's see. Three, model, three points per model bought on the attached card. So yeah, I only bought one model. So this catches cost me three points, and it means that the Rincho gain the Horde type, which means I can summon in Rincho, which uh, at that cost is a is a major buff. Now, if it turns out I'm misinterpreting this card, please let me know. Um, I its its requirement is Bakemono exclusion um, unique unique in cavalry, and this is not unique. It is Bakamono, and it's not Cavalry. So um, so there you go. And speaking of Cavalry, I have my Ghost Heart Mushroom, which is my last enhancement. goes on the Cave Bat Rider. Uh, during the starting phase, the attached model gains Intangible and Sixth Sense, and its weapon gains Key Block until the end phase. So uh, I didn't have a particular strategy to putting it on here. It just seemed like a... Rather than putting it on some random Bakamono, it seemed a better thing to put on the Cave Bat Rider because Cave Bat Rider's not bad. Um, kind of a, a good combination of a giant bat and a Bakamono spearman. So can't complain. So there we go. There is the Bakamono Horror. I'll give you one. Ah! Oh, and I knocked the fence over. There we go. We'll give one close look at the models. <laughs> There's all the players. And then there's the objectives in the back. All right, so that is it for the Bakamono Horde. Let's go take a look at the Witch Cult. How it do, everybody? So uh, I'm here with the uh, cult. With the cult here, we've got the We Three Meet Again theme, and that's the excuse that I have to take these three witches. So it gives me two bonus key on the first turn, two bonus key on the fourth turn. All my witches cost one fewer um, rice, and then I also auto win the tactical roll on turn four. So that's pretty handy. Um, I, first of all, I have to apologize for all the unpainted slash half painted metal slash subbed in models, but this is a work in progress. We got the box yesterday. So this is uh, Aiko, Aiko, who's a skeleton. Um, this is Umeka, who's a Barakumin, which is sacrificial Humi, really. Uh, this is the uh, Bear Clan guy, so he's pretty beefy. This is Witch 1, uh, Jose, Witch 2, Shoujo, and Witch 3, uh, Akuba. And then this is actually, we had a little mix-up in our order, and we didn't get the Rokuro model, so instead, we are using a different bird on the same size base. Katembo. Katembo, there we go, so... Katembo turn trader for the purpose of this game. Um, aside from that, um, one of my psychers is the ability to summon in one skeleton per game, so I'll either summon in this guy or this guy. I'm just not entirely sure. It depends on how the game is going. Um, well, that's really all there is to say, except for the fact that uh, I did, for formality's sake, throw in the uh, zero rice um, card here called Rest in Peace. It's for the Bear Clan guy, and it gives him four key... Uh, so I, I have to offer it to my opponent first. If they accept, um, the Bear Clan guy gets four key to start out with, and then um, all Bear Clan models get like a vengeance against him. But since my dad is not playing Bear Clan, that wouldn't make any sense. I also have the uh, Feed on Fear card, which is pretty handy. Uh, that gives me key for whenever my uh, dad fails a fear test, which is handy given that everything has fear. And then I decided to give Rokuro over here um, Fearsome Presence, which gives him Dread 1, which is pretty nasty because you actually get one fewer die when making your uh, post, or not when making your uh, fear test against this model, so long as it's not the activating model. That's it. Deployment is done. So we picked our corners, so I'm kind of in this sloppy six by six corner over here, but it's good enough. And then Trepang got an extra four inches, so I snuck him out this way. And then Carl has his uh, witch cult in the back there. And then the, the zombie bird uh, is deployed forward 
because Carl's worried about me actually using the, the hole. So he's coming forward to destroy the hole. And that is it. Carl, why don't we roll to see uh, if I can actually win a roll for once. Uh, it's a tie. Three and three. Five and six. I won one. Yay! Uh, you can go first. Okay. So how about that? I win one, I win one, and it's the one that really doesn't matter. Uh, so we will uh, we'll see you at the end of turn one. End of turn one, lots of sneaky, sneaky maneuvering. Um, the evil undead bird uh, took out my, my, my cool terrain piece, so I didn't even have a chance to, to hardly look at it before it got taken out. Um, so I, I kind of moved my force in a few directions. Um, all threatening the middle of the board. So I summoned in the other Rincho. So I've got the Rincho and a beater. Um, you can't see him, but he's right on the edge of the building here. I've got Track and Trapeng covering this end here. I've got Hiratsuna and the Spearman covering this access here. And then finally over here, I've got my um, Bat, which has quite a considerable movement because he's cavalry, so he gets an extra three inches either at the beginning or the end of the move. So I had him run from from this corner over to here, and then he moved three inches to get to there, and then he ran again over to here, and then moved three inches to get to there, and I do the move at the end so that I can position him, his facing, as opposed to the, the run. And so this little extra three-inch cavalry moves and walk. So I can move him and then turn him if I want. Um, and Carl, other than targeting my tree stump for destruction, summoned a skeleton. Uh, summoned a skeleton in. So now there's two skeletons on the table. Um, so there are two skeletons and a witch. Yep. Right there. So the two on the right are the skeletons and the witch. And then there's two witches back there. And then that is the undead bird played by Katenbo. And there is the bear clan guy lifting his head off his body so we can get a better look pretty cool all right so that's where we are at the end of turn one obviously nobody's killed anybody yet so there are no points scored carl you want to do our roll for the next turn okay. all right carl gets a five i get a six uh what do i what do i want to do guys what do you think you can uh, vote in the... No, I'm kidding, obviously. Um, I have no idea. I do want to see what the... I'm, I'm, more, I'm more interested in kind of seeing what the witches do than I am in seeing what my own guys do, but what the heck. Uh, I think I will let you go first. End of turn two, very uh, bad turn for me generally. Um, I, a combination of playing stupid and get uh, unlucky dice rolls. I did plenty of both. So we both moved towards the middle and started whomping on each other. Um, the, the skeletons are really nasty. They only have three hit points each, but they have uh, regenerate, regenerate one, one and then with the witches, they get regenerate two. 
which means the only way you do any damage to them is all is to do all three points and um, which is hard to do you have to gang up on them and hit them multiple times and they've got three dice so they're not pushovers um, so what happened is the skeleton came into combat one of my regular bakamono and he rolled two sixes and i rolled two ones so of course the bakamono died and then i took my bat and i charged into the back of him and i stupidly for some reason did not roll any defensive dice and he just killed the bat one shot at the bat so the bat died my 20 point model just out and then hiratsuna came in and i did one point to him the first time i did one point to him the second time and then I gave Hiratsuna an extra activation, and I did nothing. So I oh, could have killed him, but I didn't. He took over Trepang, and now Trepang is, is um, controlled, and has con disturbed controlled and has Disturbed Flow. Now, does Disturbed Flow stay with him, or does that disappear at the end of the turn? Great question. I will double check. Okay, so while I'm explaining what's going on, he will go double check. Um, the bird came in and attacked. I had a little Bakamono beater right here. So the bird came in, killed the beater. And then you might remember I had my two, um, my two uh, Rincho, one behind each wall. And so one of the Rincho came in and attacked the bird and did some damage. Um, and then he got, he got woogied by one of the witches so that he had these two markers on him. And by the time Every activation, you pull one of these markers, and when you pull the second marker, at the end of that activation, he basically explodes, for lack of a better term, and you distribute eight points of damage evenly between all the enemy models within two inches. Well, I so the second activation, I moved him so that he wasn't within two inches of any other model. He managed to kill the bird, and then he exploded. And uh, then I took the other Rincho, which was hiding... Uh, over here and I moved him this way and I and Carl brought up his sacrificial human and and sacrificed her basically and so the Rincho came up and killed her and then it, with my lack activation I summoned the dead Rincho back because the Rincho have the endless uh, what is it endless numbers card which allows them to be hoard and since they're hoard they can be summoned in at least that's how I think the rules work Feel free to correct me. It's not the first time I've cheated um, on this this channel. I, I just, I don't mean to, but you know, I'm not good at games. I just love to play them. Uh, so anyway, that's where things stand. Um, so Carl is up. So of course, Carl did a horrendous amount of damage to my model. So Carl has 19 points total. Um, and then I have 11. So he is up by eight points. And I'm not sure if there's any way I can get that deficit back because of course I can replace my losses, but that just means he can keep killing more and more models. And uh, killing the bird was a good thing. I mean, I'm, I'm glad I did that, but uh, this is a nasty army. This, this new witches group uh, is nasty. And this is just one version of it. I mean, you can pair it up with Kairi, you can you do all kinds of things. So, but the, the, I'll tell you, the skeletons are, are kind of a piece of work um, because you have to somehow be able to do th damage them three times in order to kill them in one turn. And that uh, can be difficult. So anyway, there we go. Uh, we are gonna, this is the end of turn two. We will save the roll we're, we're gonna, it's late tonight, so we're going to stop the game here, and then we'll pick it up tomorrow morning. But I am, so far, I am really impressed. And I, now, granted, I'm not, you know, I'm not really good at Bakamono. I'm just kind of learning how to use them. But there, the 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 witch cult is nasty. Should um, be mentioned, it's our witch cult instead of uh, just like one person. So it's kind of a win-win, even if. The, uh, well, yeah, Bakamono that's true. So done. Carl and I are doing this together. So we're we're painting it together and everything. So we'll both be playing it. But. Um, but yeah, he's uh, he's doing pretty good so far. Uh, I hope I'm not cheating with the Rincho. So uh, maybe I'll post a question so that if I am, I can we can put a kibosh on this game, and you'll never see it. So anyway, thanks. Uh, when we'll see you, we will be moving on to turn three and uh, and sing. Oh, so the um, so we reset. So Carl, it's the end of turn two. 
you have more scenario points than I do. So you will get the first victory point. We reset to zero. I think that's how this one works, and uh, which is good because that gives me a chance. Um, otherwise, I might be in such a huge deficit that uh, I'd never be able to get out of it. Uh, and we'll start over again. So we'll see you either during or after turn three. Um, there was some, some cool witchy stuff, but it, th there wasn't really much in the way of interesting dice rolls. It was just kind of Carl casting spells and my guys just going, Bleh! so uh, maybe next turn, I'll try to show you some of this so you can see some of the new stuff in action. Here we are at the end of turn three. Um, there was some more slaying going on. Uh, I had uh, the two Rincho, one of them attacked one of the witches and killed her. The other one got ganged up on um, by Trepang, and, but that didn't really do it. Well, I guess he didn't really do a lot, but the other one got ganged up on by, uh, the other Rincho got attacked and killed by the um, skeleton here and then the witches shot the other Rincho to pieces so I lost both my Rincho which means I'm handing over 18 points scenario points to, to Carl and I only killed the witch so I got six in return so I don't you know as long as he can keep killing the Rincho I don't think there's any way I can I can uh, um, would do enough damage to, to kill him, especially since his uh, skeletons are only three wounds each. So even though they're dealing out massive amounts of damage, they're just not worth very much. But we're gonna keep going. Um, so over here, uh, here at Suna, and one of the skeletons traded useless blows, mainly because all I did was counter-strike um, defense. And um, he's, I'm just trying to avoid the, uh, the undead dude from the, uh, um, whoever they are, the bear clan. Um, so anyway, that's about it. Um, so at the very end of the turn, last activation, I called in my, I re-summoned a Rincho. Again, this will be interesting if this turns out to be not legal, but I think it is. Uh, and even, so it would even be more one-sided if it wasn't. If I couldn't summon the Rincho, this game would have been over a turn ago. So um, we will uh, move on to the next turn. I will do my best to whittle him down, at least to get rid of the witches, which is the only thing I can really affect. And then uh, we'll see what happens from there on in. Um, I did, we didn't show it on camera, but I did actually get to go first last turn, which really helped. Um, so we'll see if I have the same luck this time. Carl, you wanna roll? Oh wait, it's turn four. I it's auto, turn four. I so so even though I would have won that six to two, uh, I automatically lose this. So the Rincho will probably get chewed up before he can do anything. But we'll give it a shot. Okay, here we are at the end of turn four. Carl is creaming me in point, but it's actually a reasonably interesting game if you discount the fact that I am getting slaughtered from the point perspective. Um, the, so what happened this last game is uh, I actually pulled a trick that worked, though it took a lot. You remember I had a, a, a beater, not really a beater, but it, I'm playing him as a beater over here, and there was this one of these stupid bloody skeletons who can't take more than one wound at a time and have three dice and are just nasty. So you have to do three wounds to them on three separate attacks. So what I did was I stunned him 
And then I attacked him here, and then, believe it or not, um, the, then the Bakamoto beater came in and attacked him, so I had him outnumbered three to one, or two, whatever, whatever you know, three, three of my models to one of his. And um, the beater did a point of damage, did, and I think the beater actually did two points of damage. And then here it soon have failed completely. But then, believe it or not, Trepang came came in from from the back and did the final wound, and I finally killed the skeleton. Of course, I did this totally ignoring uh, Carl. What's your what, your guy's name over here? Uh, Tadao. Tadao. Totally ignoring the bear clan undead Tadao, who is now behind me and flanking me, which is going to be bad. Uh, in the meantime. I, I bided for time. Uh, Carl took over one of my Rincho, the one in the back there. Um, and so what I did was I just took Trepang once his control disappeared and I just kind of walked him out of there so that the Rincho couldn't attack Trepang. And so he ran the Rincho away. I walked the Rincho forward and used six key to summon an, another Rincho. And then... Um, but the, the problem is, and we're trying to figure out exactly the rules for this because it's a little confusing. Carl's got an aura up that says, um, but I don't. Th I think we're interpreting it right. That that says that anything, that any enemy model that loses that uses key within the aura, which is six inches, automatically. I'm going to sneeze again. Sorry. Okay, I'm good. Um, gets a control marker once the activation's done. And so I had to keep the win the Rincho out of six inch range and then use the summoning because, and the argument is, well, where's the, is that model actually spending key because of the Bakamono card, the Horde card? And so would that generate a, a, a token for that particular model or not? And I, I don't know, I don't know. I, um, I don't know the rules well enough to make that decision. But anyway, to, to avoid any potential cheating, I kept him back over six inches and then summoned the other Rincho in. So here we are. Um, Carl once again got a bazillion points. He didn't get any this last turn, and what I got from him was... Okay, I got three. Oh, you got three. He got three, and I got three. Um, so he's up by 16 or some or 12 or some ridiculous number. So uh, at the end of turn four, Carl gets the second um, victory point. And then we restart to zero. And uh, I just keep walking in these high point guys because I have to. And he keeps killing them. And, and as a result, he's just slaughtering me. Um, so, <laughs> oh well, that's the way it happens. It, it's been really fun. I, we both really like the new, um, the new faction or the new, the, the new, not really faction, but the new models, models and, and synergy they have and also i have been not playing the bakamona well I, I just realized that there were a couple of things i could have been doing that would have made a huge difference early in the game and i just wasn't because i'm not familiar with them i, I wasn't looking at it so um maybe next game so uh, but so far it's been fun it's been entertaining it's not you know competitive from a points standpoint but it has been a fun and entertaining game so you know what the heck i don't care uh, so that's it. So Carl, why don't we roll to see? So it's not turn four. So you actually have to earn going first this time. Carl gets four. I get a three. He earns it. So Carl will get to go first. And, um, if he wants to, which he does. And then we'll go from there. End of turn five, um, as as uh, scripted. Um, I actually had to spend a bunch of key this turn on things other than summoning Bakamono, which was fine. It needed to be done. So uh, let's see. What happened is this guy came into the house and killed um, Trepang, and then I managed to Hiratsuna managed to escape to the edge, and then the Axe Man came in and started whacking away at track, but track managed by spending lots of key, 
uh, by dice, managed to defend himself, and he's alive on one wound. Um, the two Rincho <clears throat> are are safe at least until one of them gets controlled again. Um, you know, Carl's it's funny. Carl has not been rolling well on his dice for the control. I've just been rolling so miserably in my defense that that he's had me every time. So so here's where we are. So Carl is up eight two for the third point. Um, I, I'm not sure if there's any way I could even win the third point, but we're gonna keep at it. Um, and see, I mean, I'm, I'm killing his models. They just have so few wounds compared to what my models have, especially with me summoning in Rincho and him just killing them turn after turn after turn. So, um, and he's been, you know, he won the, uh, he, he automatically won the initiative on turn four, and then he won the initiative on turn five, which are pretty critical turns because it lets his spells go off. You know, and in essence, his spells neutralize one of the Rincho every turn. So that's what he's been doing. He's just been controlling me and neutralizing a Rincho. And then, so it's all, it's all going down the drain. But let's, uh, let's take a roll and see who gets to, uh, to go again. So Carl gets a one. And I get a one, of course, because that, I might have won that one. Carl gets four and I get a two. So once again, Carl gets to go first and neutralize one of my Rincho. All right, here we are at the end of turn six and the end of the game. Uh, here is what is left. My two Rincho, though, the guy that is in base to base with the um, Bear Clan zombie is, is sorely hurting. However, um, the uh, and then the skeleton over there killed Track. He only had one wound left. Uh, it took him two attacks to do it, though. But, uh, and he did exactly one wound. But... By and large, uh, it was an points-wise, it was a slaughter. Carl won all three victory points by an overwhelming number of scenario points every turn. Um, even though you know I was slowly whittling him down, and and you know what, we're gonna find out whether I the new card that I played actually allows me to summon in the Rincho. If not, this would have been an even more overwhelming slaughter. So. The, there is no question the new faction is, or not new faction, but the new box set and the things it can do are really, really interesting. Um, so, Carl, uh, what do you think? Um, I, well, I like them, no question. I know that they're unpainted and some of you are getting after me, but I swear we got this box set two days ago. And uh, I'm still a full-time student, technically, so... So, you know, we're, we're working on that. But the, the models are great, albeit a little tricky to put together. Um, it was really fun. I mean, they're a lot of fun to play, if nothing else. And I think it'll be interesting to see um, how kind of my play style changes as I get more accustomed to uh, kind of working through these. And um, by no means, every time I play the Bakamono, you're like, oh, it's just Bakamono. This should be, you know, just a walk in the park. And every time the summoning thing is extremely irritating and half the time wins them the, the game. Uh, if I only do have one complaint, it's that I think that the, the communal cards in general... Um, a, like by the rules allow for a lot of things or I should say don't allow for a lot of things that make things tricky so for example you can't use any key, key drain spells on models with the um on models with uh, communal cards and as we were kind of going over you're like um i had one model that has the ability to make it so that if you spend key while within an aura that it uh, cost it that you gain a control marker but then if you go off the reading of the card is the model spending the key or is the card spending the key and uh, there was and so there was just a couple of questions that we had like that where the by the book the ha just having a communal card makes you immune to a whole lot of key stuff that would otherwise go on so and the uh, the the witch cult has a communal card do they not they do have a communal card, so. so so they benefit from it, but it hurts them a lot because a lot of their shenanigans are are kind of key oriented. There we go. That's that's Darwin. You probably haven't seen Darwin. You see Spook a lot. The dinner alarm. Yeah, it's a dinner alarm. It's about that time. All right. Well, it was uh, it was it was pretty fun. Uh, it was definitely a fun game. I mean, it, like I said, I was never in it point wise, but as far as just sitting down and playing, 
it, it was a lot of fun and we're left with just a couple of models left on the table. Um, I think if there was, if we were going to duke it out, I think the advantage would probably go to Carl, not only because the Minamoto guy is very good, but because the skeleton is almost impossible to kill. With, with, well, I mean, with one guy, he is impossible to kill because he keeps healing every turn and then, uh, so you need to gang up on him so you can somehow get three wounds on him on the same turn. And I'm, I'm not sure, you know, I think if this, these four figures played out, I think that, uh, that the cult would definitely uh, be victorious. So with the witch so. dead, he only has regenerate one. Oh yeah. Okay. So at least you can make progress. So anyway, that's it. Um, thank you everyone. I hope you, uh, forgive us for playing with the unpainted models, but as Carl said, we just got them two days ago and this was kind of like the unfinished game because all the buildings we also just built if you saw that some of that um shenanigans on video as well as the fences as well as the fences which are brand new well the fences are at least painted but they are brand new so everything on this table is pretty much brand new except the mushrooms so i hope you guys enjoyed those that's about the only fully painted thing on here I guess that's it we will uh be back as soon as we can with something else entertaining and fun um, guys, be safe, be smart, and thank you for joining us once again on Gitsapalooza.